like to call the regular meeting for September 22nd, 2008 to order. Roll call, please. Ms. Funderburg? Here. Mr. Minkevich? Here. Ms. Kraut? Here. Mr. Roscoe? Here. President Kuderich? Here. Ms. Freyer is excused. Ms. Buckley is here. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I'll let you get over here. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'll let you in first. Next item is the consent agenda. All matters listed under the consent agenda are considered to be routine in nature by the Board of Education and will be acted upon by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items. If any member of the Board of or citizens request discussion of an item, that item will be removed from the consent agenda and will become the first item of business under the report of the superintendent portion of the agenda. I have no requests, so I need a motion. Mr. President, I'll make a motion that we approve the consent agenda as presented. Support. I got a motion by Mr. Minkevich, supported by Ms. Roscoe. Is there any questions? Seeing none, votes in order. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passed, 6 0. Next item is report of superintendent. Mr. Weiss. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, first on our list this evening, uh, we have our Curriculum Director, Mr. Hurst, um, he's going to give us an update on the MME, which is the Michigan Merit Exam, um, also known as the High School Meet, formerly known as the High School Meet, um, is a summary prepared for the board. Um, she'll have very shortly. What I, will be, <coughs> what I will be presenting is the, a brief summary just of the MME. <coughs> One of the things I think you're already aware of is that after making AYP the past two years on appeal, the high school did not make it this year. We still are doing an appeal, but in all likelihood, even at the conclusion of that appeal, there will not be an AYP. There were a number of areas that had to be addressed. The, main reason for going for the appeal is because in the process of looking at the AYP, they break it down over a three-year period. There's certain indexes that they look at. And the idea is, is to get the numbers above zero. And there was a, two or three different areas that were below zero. So by going for the, the appeal and addressing certain issues, it, it affects that number. So hoping that next year, or this current school year, when the numbers come out and that average is made, there'll be a better chance of making it. So again, the appeal right now is more for this coming year than it was for the past year. This shows the overview of the, the core areas. Just a reminder where it says met exceeded standards. Again, this is based on a, a four point scale, four levels. Level one is advanced. Level two is proficient. Level three is partially proficient, and level four is not proficient. So what this reflects, met and exceeded, are levels one and two. So you can see in levels one and two that uh, uh, reading and social studies are certainly the highest, but what's disappointing is if comparing it to last year, 07, that we kind of held our own. Actually, we went up slightly. A couple percentage points doesn't actually show that there, but a couple percentage points in reading somewhat uh, the same in social studies, but we dipped in writing and ELA, of course, because ELA is a combination of reading and writing and dipped in math and in science from last year. This is in comparison to the state. You can see again where we are uh, in comparison to the state mm -hmm. uh, below in all of the areas. One of the things that's important to be aware of, there's a number of things that I wanted to 
but I want to make sure we address one of them being creating that level playing field. Remember when the MME started, it's aligned with the curriculum. That curriculum requires all students to take four years of math, which includes Algebra 1, Geometry, and Algebra 2. It also requires the three years of science, which includes chemistry or physics. And some of the areas that test obviously are covered on that. What w to me, what was unfair was that they just brought out the curriculum, but they brought out the MME at the same time. Now, some districts had all their kids taking those courses. We did not. So what happens, you've got a number of students that still have not taken all the core classes that really are being tested by the MME. That won't even happen for us until next year because it started with last year's ninth graders. So this year's ninth graders are this year's 10th graders and they'll be taking it next year as 11th graders. Now how they'll do, still we'll see, at least it's gonna have, they'll have the, had the opportunity of taking all the courses that need to take. We have a great deal of kids that still come in below grade level in, in all areas. And <coughs> there's three maximums that I've c copied down here that I think are relevant. One of them is catch-up growth is rarely achieved by pressuring students who are behind to run faster in the same amount of time. We traditionally do that. High schools traditionally do that. You get kids coming in below grade level, and what do we do? Put them in a traditional schedule, and we just ask them, you just got to catch up. It doesn't work. It doesn't happen. Catch-up growth is typically achieved by allowing students to run longer and run smarter, i.e. dramatically increasing direct instructional time and using it wisely. And one of the ways that we can do that is by focusing on scheduling, building principles can double or triple the amount of direct instructional time for students who need targeted instruction in a single semester. We did that. So one of the things we need to look at again is looking at what interventions can we address <coughs> to get the scores up where they need to be. One of the things we did put in place for multiple reasons was trimesters. It helps out in a number of different ways. It helped out because of the requirements that we had for the new high school curriculum. It also helps out with the MME. We we're looking at it helping out. One of the reasons for that is, is that all we have all the all year, the idea if you look back at that one maximum about, again, not running fast, but running smarter, the idea is that we're gonna have all year, all year long algebra for, for ninth grade algebra one and ninth grade English. The idea of building that foundation better. So these kids now will be in there and hopefully it's gonna help build that foundation that they're lacking by the time they get to their junior year. Also, we have the opportunities because of trimester for the classes for, inter for, for the interventions at the time. Remember, the classes are 71, 72 minutes long, as opposed to the 52, 53, 55, depending on which year we're talking about. The idea is, again, is to address these interventions right away, as opposed to waiting until after the class is over, or the semester, or the year. Because it's a 72, 71, 72 minute class, the intent is, is that building some time in over the course of the week we have 10, 15 minutes where you can have direct or prescriptive instruction for the kids depending on where their deficiencies are. Also, we have the opportunities of retaking the classes. Remember, again, that was one of the things with the trimester that if a student had failed Algebra 1 first semester, traditionally, they take it second semester. You just keep failing. This, the idea of this is if a student is failing first semester, first trimester, which is 12 weeks long, they could actually take it again. So they have the opportunity of understanding the material earlier than waiting until the end of the year. We also are offering ACT prep classes. There's an eight, every junior will go through an ACT prep class. It's 12 weeks for, it's for a trimester. But what they do is they rotate every four weeks into a different class. So it's four weeks into language arts, four weeks into science, and four weeks into math. And during that ACT prep class, you, you hone in on test taking skills. ACT is a very difficult test. Remember, it's a college entrance exam, so they hone on different types of tips that help students along that, uh, t that type of test. Uh, it's also an opportunity to give them time on task with such things as, or different components of the MME, which is different types of things on, called the MEEP wraparound and also the uh, work keys. And they have the opportunity of going on during those four week periods to, do, to address those specific content that they're in. We also started this year, we have a reading program. All staff 712 were trained in. One of the areas at the high school we've been struggling with for years is, is reading. We have about 45, 50%, some years 60% of our kids 
coming into high school, they're below grade level in reading. It's very difficult to try to catch kids up at that point in their lives in the reading. If you, we s researched a number of different programs over the years to try to, to help out secondary uh, difficult readers, one of the things we'd come up with was the Johns Hopkins approach. We've been using that for years. It's not enough, it needs to be supplemented. And what we're looking at right now this year, and all tr staff were trained in, is reading apprenticeship. One of the focuses that reading apprenticeship does is focuses on metacognitive type strategies. So you think about, if you're, if you're all good readers, and you think about why are you good readers, what do you do to make yourself a good reader? And when you're reading, you're asking yourself questions, you're painting a picture, you're, you're visualizing what it is that you're reading. Poor readers don't do that. Poor readers are just reading words. There's no comprehension with it. So the idea with the reading apprenticeship is taking them through that metacognitive approach to ask questions, to predict things that's going to happen. And so at this point in time, starting in August, this past August, all 712 teachers were trained in it, and that'll be our focus over the course of the year, then hopefully transferring that to the kids themselves. Also, departmental plans. Every department is required to come up with a, an aggressive uh, plan to address the deficiencies for MME in, in their, again, respective areas. We also have support math classes that are in place that go along with the code teaching classes. One of the areas, the subgroups that are that's used for AYP is, is uh, special needs. So with, as a result of that, we're looking at having, went from last year of having two code teaching classes to this year having five. So there are two classes in algebra, one in geometry, and then one in each of the other content areas. And with the math classes, there's also support classes. So they actually take the support, the, the regular Algebra one class, but they also then will get an extra hour to de be dealing with a support for the math class. I want that more. But that, at this point in time, that's where we're at with the, the and you can see the need by looking at the data, the numbers themselves. We're in a situation where we're capable of doing much better than we're doing, and we're looking at, at this point in time, why is, it, why is that? We're breaking down data, looking at where the deficiencies are. Just an example for writing. We dipped in writing. We haven't dipped in writing in years. And one of the areas that we're looking at with the data was that we were deficient with, with details in writing. So the idea is focusing more on the details with regards to writing, and that's one of the areas in the departmental plan. And then the other part of this, uh, or this presentation, I just wanted to talk about a couple of changes in MEEP and also the schedule. But before I do that, just if I can address any of the questions with regards to the data or the interventions. Mr. President. Yes, go ahead, Ms. Wood. Um, Dan, thanks for that presentation. Those scores are, they are disappointing. But I mean, my question was going to be, and you answered all of them, is what interventions we had in place, what we were planning to do to correct it. And you seem to have a good handle on why it happened and some measures to correct it. So I'm confident that we can do this, and hopefully by next year the, the grades will come up. But I do have a question. Are our special needs students, um, they're included in these, all this scoring too? They're, Is that you can get separate reports. The report that you just looked at there are all students. So that's all numbers. Okay. But you can break it down to having all students or students uh, that are separate s special needs. Um, but again, that reflects everybody, those numbers today. Okay. i got a question for you, Mr. Hurst. Um, you were talking about the writing. You said it was the first time we dipped down in the writing on the scores here. I mean, has anybody figured out why is that? I mean, just because they're not getting enough detail is what it is? Well, they're that's, a, that's an excellent question because we're all as perplexed and disappointed as you are tonight. The w writing is one of the areas we've been kind of hanging our hat on. Uh, we've, uh, at one point in time, where we're just above the state average three years ago, we've been maintaining some pretty good scores throughout. But for whatever reason, they dipped uh, this particular year, to me, quite significantly compared to what we have done in the past. But in breaking that data down, the primary area that it shows that where when you when you look at it, it talks about the type of areas to, to focus on was in detail in writing, and that's one of the areas we have been looking at in the past. But we're going to another er, another uh, area that we're going to also address is the because we all tenth graders take the plan at, for tenth grade, and there's a direct correlation between the plan scores and, and the ACT. 
just about two or three points. So if you look in, uh, on the plan and see where our kids are scoring 14, 15, then you're pretty sure that's going to be a two or three points above that for the ACT, which is not good enough. So what we're looking at is why those kids that scored 12, 13, 14 on the plan, what were their deficiencies? And that w that's what, we'll, and this year they'll be juniors. So we're addressing that class, and that was the area where details seemed to be the most, uh, th th the biggest deficiency that they had. One of the areas that we're looking at too, remember, is, is, part, is one of the strategies for the district is six plus one. Six plus one has been a strategy that we have on, had on the table for the last few years but it hasn't been consistently practiced throughout the district and that has really been a, uh, an emphasis this year. All staff were retrained on it again the first day of school and we have things in place that are monitoring the writing process throughout the course of first semester and second semester and again the emphasis is on the traits and one of the traits is ideas and ideas you know is obviously uh, aligned with the whole idea of details. I have one other question for you. And you mentioned the ACT prep class for the juniors. Is that going to be uh, an elective or are you going to make it a required Oh, one? we made it a requirement. We, the kids could, we, we've had a, well, at least I don't know if there's been any since I've been over there in, uh, at the end of spring. But we did have two or three parents that called and wanted their kid opted out so that they could get in a particular class um, uh, band. So I allowed that. But after that was after talking to them about to me what the importance of the ACT was and why we're doing it, that kind of thing, and they still wanted to opt out, so we allowed that. But there's only, again, out of the whole class, to my knowledge, we're talking about two or three kids. I think it's an important class, and I think it, it, hopefully it'll benefit our students a lot, especially that one, too. Mr. President? Yes, Mr. Could I, uh, and I, I'm going to ask you, I read somewhere, and I can't remember where, that the state is already fooling around with the math and they were talking about allowing Algebra 2 to be taken over two years and to give them credit for each year. And then we're creating a couple other classes. And I didn't know if you had heard anything, and I, I can't remember where I read it, but it's, they're constantly changing everything. I mean, you, you can never get your curriculum set because every year they change it. They've actually had a couple of study sessions just recently, one was with uh, adult educators and legislators. The other one was with students. And I think I read the same article you did. One of the recommendations from the students was to allow algebra over two years and get received credit for it. But, I, there's, but there's no question. With this particular class, it's, the, and it's, it's not going to just have an impact in the state on Romulus. You're talking mm -hmm. about statewide. That, there are no, that this will not actually hit until next or two years from now. When those kids are ready to graduate and the number of kids that are not going to be able to graduate because of uh, missing math or an English credit or something along that line, th th I think legislature, now if you read the papers, they're starting to be s more sensitive to that and they are starting to look at certain things and there's a good chance that something could change between now and the next two years, but at the moment we're living with the guidelines that are set. Mr. President? Okay. Go, yes, ahead. go ahead, Mr. President. Well, the, if you talk, you get a different uh, response probably whether you talk to a student or a teacher at the moment. I probably ta have talked to, uh, I would say, two-thirds of the high school staff and asked the direct question, what do you think of trimesters? And so far, I have not had anybody tell me they didn't like it. Now, kids is something different. Now, when you talk to the kids, one of the most difficult things they had a hard time adjusting to was certainly the first week because they're, they're, it's a long class. You're mm -hmm. sitting there now for 70 some odd minutes. They're getting, they have to adjust to that. Second thing they've got to adjust to, and hopefully the teachers are adjusting to this themselves, you can't teach the same way in 70 minutes that you did in 50 some minutes. Because the kids are not gonna be engaged, they're gonna be bored. So the teachers also, and we had workshops on that last year. We had people come in and talk about how do you teach in a, in a longer period of class. You have to have three transitions, you should have, three transitions as you teach. Uh, so you're, you're doing different things for the hour. Now I think some staff are doing that quite well and others maybe are still struggling with that, trying to find some other ideas 
that they can use to, to do the transitions. But staff were for it. And, it, and, I've, and I, when I asked the staff, well, how are the kids three weeks later, they say they're adjusting. There's still a little bit of grumbling, not as much as there was first week of September. There's still some, but I, I think they'll get it. And again, kids normally adjust that a lot quicker than the adults do in those kinds of things. Okay, Ms. Funderburg. Yes, um, I had a question. I wanted to know um, what types of initiatives have been, um, if any, have been put in place at the middle school to kind of um, intercept those children to get them, um, I guess, on the road to the type of testing that they'll be taking when they get to the high school. Well, the first of all, for the middle school, the, the middle school staff were also trained in the reading apprenticeship, so that's good. So we're all coming in on the same page. The other thing with the, um, the testing piece, one of the things we changed from at the middle school was moving away from the Iowa, and now they're doing, um, it's, a, it's the counterpart to the uh, plan, Explorer, I believe okay. it is. So that's, there's, it's supposed to go with the Explorer, with the plan, and then the ACT. So they're all correlated with one another, and it's a similar type of questions. It builds in one or the other. So they're doing that, so that helps also. Um, the math program, they're also co-teaching, so there's, they're doing some similar things at the high school. One of the things we didn't do this year, as we did last year, was having a math support class. And part of that was just because of there was no place in the schedule for that, mm -hmm. but the co-teaching classes did expand, so there are more of them than they did last year, which would be helpful. Um, any, of the, any of the, at this point, even in this year, we're developing year-long PD plans, and, it, and this year, it wasn't always the, pa the same in the past, was Middle school always wasn't trained in the same things. This year, it's a it's a seven twelve PD plan, so okay. they're all being going through the same process. Great. Anybody else? Let me then. I, one of the changes in the meet for the fall of 08, and this you may have read this in the paper. Due to the breach of meet security last fall, certain things are now in place. Meet administration for each subject will now be on the same day across the state. If you remember, someone I believe was reading. To write it. I can't remember now which yeah. it was. But anyway, somebody showed it ahead of time. Yeah. So the whole state had to retake that test. Mm -hmm. Sixth grade. Fifth or sixth grade. Sixth. Yeah. Sixth grade. So at this point in time, they're being very cautious and they're being very strict with their guidelines. Deadlines for shipping material back to state will be strictly enforced. It's on one day. If you don't get it back on that day, schools are, are fined and it's several hundred dollars. And, and your scores don't count for AYP. Changes in the meet for the fall. MEEP reading will eliminate the response to paired reading selections essay, so that means one less essay. Math shortened to one day by reducing the number of items per core from three to two. Science will replace two of the four constructive response items in each grade, and social studies will eliminate the taking a stand, so persuasive writing. All that means up there is they're getting, they're reducing the number, the amount of writing and putting multiple choice instead. And the reason for that is probably twofold. One, less time therefore less money to as far as the grading these and, and then getting them back to schools. The dates for this year's MEEP, for MEEP it starts off on October 14th. It is math, schools cannot do it before, cannot do it after that date. That is the date you give a math MEEP for elementary. ELA is one, the first one is two parts. The first part is October 16th and I just put three bullets under there as what well, comes under that particular test writing from knowledge and experience, independent reading, and paired reading. It's reading two selections and then co having, or having comprehension questions. The second d uh, day of ELA is on October 21st. They again writing from knowledge and there's a sample student writing piece. On the 23rd of October is science for fifth grade and October 23rd is social studies. And then on the MME, ACT, there's three days, 10th, March 10th, March 11th, and March 12th. March 10th is the ACT, plus there's a writing component. And under the ACT, you have math, reading, science, and writing. And then under the second day is work keys in the Michigan, and I, it's the word missing there, it's supposed to be Michigan wraparound. That's, those are sample, or those are kinds of questions that they used to take on the MEEP. So now they take a few of those, and then they do the work keys. The work keys is for reading for information, applied math, and locating information. Those are the kind of things, it's more, it's more applicable uh, information that the kids use. And those are the types of things also that they're getting out of the ACT prep class. They go online and take those kinds of exams. And then on the 12th is the Michigan Science and the Social Studies exam. So it's three days, the same as it was last year. We'll be using the same, 
process that we did last year, the early and late starts. So the kids come in first, it's a quality, it's a quality testing environment. Even again, not, the scores didn't necessarily reflect that this year, but it is a quality testing environment. And, uh, and the state give you an option two years ago. Last year, you, they wanted everybody to do that, but we already started that. That's the way we tested in the first place. And that's it. Thank you, Mr. Harris. Um, next on the agenda, we have a um, motion that's needed to approve uh, an overnight field trip. Uh, our elementary uh, sixth graders will be attending an overnight camp uh, later on this year with their approval, of course. Mr. President, I make a motion that we approve the field trip um, to Camp Tamarack. May 11th to the 15th for the fifth graders at Barth Elementary. I'll support. Got a motion by Ms. Buckley. Support by Mr. Minkevich. Is there any questions? All right, <coughs> seeing none, votes in order. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, say nay. 6 0 vote. Motion passed. Okay, next we have a uh, um, request for a motion uh, approving. Uh, purchase of sixth grade science textbooks. Um, you may recall that uh, we went to uh, a kit approach, which fits very well uh, first through fifth grade. Um, but the sixth grade, um, it was recommended by the committee and also by the, actually the science kit company that, that we go with the textbook that's lined up with the middle school. Mr. Hurst spent some time uh, last spring and this summer uh, examining materials with a committee of sixth grade teachers and also middle school teachers who would see those students a year later. Um, and that's kind of what went into the, uh, um, the decision of uh, the book that they decided to recommend. Okay, I need a motion. I move that the Board of Education adopt sixth grade science textbook titled A Closer Look for Macmillan McGraw Hill, copyright 2008. Purchase for the 2008-2009 school year is recommended by Director of Curriculum at a total cost of $28,427.25. Somebody support? Support. Motion by Ms. Kraut, supported by Ms. Buckley. Is there any questions? I do not have any. Yes, Ms. Ross. Uh, I see that we don't currently have these in yet, but they're just approving them. So when will they start using these textbooks? They right now there's one of the things that's needed is professional development and right we have the social studies text that is in place and we're so I've already set up a PD for those teachers for October 28th for that our next PD is November 7th or 11th so I want to set up that day for the science textbook so I'm hoping to have them everything in place by then so the teachers can be can receive the PD that they're going to need for that book but they the company told me there's about a 10-day turnaround. So once it's approved by you, then I put the order in, and it's about 10 days. And, they, and the teachers will use them. The only One of the reasons we kind of hesitated to give us a little bit of time up front is because all the elementary schools right now are really meeping. So they've got the meet plan. They're not getting into that part of the text anyway. So that's, they have another two, three weeks for that. So by the time the books get here, it'll be pretty good timing. Mr. President? Yes, Mr. McKevich. Uh, are we ordering a few extra books? I, mean, yeah, I did. I, I think I ordered, uh, um, I believe the number was 308 for uh, next year's group class, and I ordered 330 for. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Votes in order. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. 6 0, motion passed. item for your approval is a uh, uh, petition for a reinstatement of student uh, 2001 uh, 6686. Again, the student has satisfied the uh, reinstatement committee um, that they've met the criteria for a conditional reinstatement. Mr. President, yes, Mr. I'll make a motion that uh, we reinstate student number 2001-6686. Eight six, uh, effective September twenty third two thousand and eight, and it's conditioned upon nine items that are on that uh, first page of our 
Real quick. Support. Got a motion by Mr. Minkevich, supported by Ms. Buckley. Is there any questions? Um, I yes, Ms. Crow. that the student resides in the Wayne Westland School District. Is he responsible for his transportation? Actually, um, the school code requires for, um, that student will be attending Wayne Westland schools, but because they've been expelled by a Michigan public school, they cannot attend Wayne Westland or any school in Michigan until we reinstate the student. Oh, and so he's going to attend Wayne Westland. Yes. Okay. Unless they move back to Ron. Right. Not okay. being here attending Wayne Westland. Is there any other questions? Okay, votes in order. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. 6 0, -oh, motion passed. Okay, next you have a, a list of several items uh, of interest. We have uh, our uh, annual reports from uh, a number of our elementary schools and uh, uh, middle school, community high, and um, senior high school, um, along with uh, some. Uh, monthly newsletters from the buildings. Um, I also want to remind the board members that the ribbon cutting for the fitness trail at Park Elementary is tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. Uh, the collaborative effort of uh, Park Elementary School and, uh, uh, and Oakwood Hospitals. Um, and also immediately following that, um, any, if any board members are so inclined, um, we'll be giving a, a presentation on the November ballot proposals to the senior citizens. Uh, over at the senior center. That starts at 11 o'clock. We'll probably go until about 11.30 or so. Um, and that's all I have. Okay, the next item I have is communications and expressions from the public. I have none. The next one will be questions and concerns from board members. Uh, go President. ahead, Ms. Funderburg. Um, I got an opportunity to go over to uh, Barth Elementary today because I won't be able to attend tomorrow and I just wanted to say that everyone's going to be very pleased. Um, they did an excellent job over there and I'm sure that uh, the staff and the kids are going to be really excited about using the new equipment. It was really great. Mr. President, I had a couple of questions. I, I got the information on uh, the homecoming parade. How would this be communicated to the community to let them know Carl, how this will be the change in the homecoming parade, how will that be communicated to the community? Uh, you know, I'm not sure at this time. Okay. I don't really know. I can look into that, though. Okay. Thank you. And one other thing, I won't be able to make the ribbon cutting ceremony tomorrow, so I'm sorry I have work commitments, but I would love to go, but I won't be able to. Anybody else? Okay. Got a couple things here. One. I understand the transportation department needs a pat on the back and congratulations. They took first place in the motorized category at the Pumpkin Festival. Again, a lot of hard work from a lot of staff members and volunteers and donations. And anybody that was in the light parade, definitely seen their hard work. It was a very nice float. Also, from what I understand, the band also took first place for the non-motorized in the light parade, so that's a good thing for them. Um, I would, had the privilege of going to Ram, Ramos Elementary for their open house and uh, I'd like to kind of commend the people over there. They had some information that was very helpful for parents. Um, they put together some packets for parents that maybe they might fall on to hard times, give them some resources that they can go to. And they also had a packet for grandparents raising grandchildren. So if anybody's interested, they can see Bobby Alley or Margie McNally over there and there's a lot of information in there uh, to hand out. Um, also, the Romulus Middle School is having their community charity run on Saturday, October 18th. But if you sign up early, you can get yourself a T-shirt, and the fees are a lot less. Yes. You have to sign up by October 4th so, with um, the middle school, Keith Brothers. And uh, just like to say thank you for all the elementary schools and schools that were out at the Pumpkin Festival. They had great weather, and uh, it was very nice to see a lot of staff members that didn't leave, live in the community out there. I see Mr. Weiss on Sunday out there, and it was very nice to see a lot of people, a lot of teachers I've seen out there and staff members. It's very nice. Okay, Mr. 
be. Is that all right? Next item we have is the executive session. And we are going to go into executive session for superintendent's evaluation. And there will be no action afterwards. So I need a roll call. Oh, oh need, sorry about that. Need a motion. Support. Got a motion by Ms. Roscoe, supported by Ms. Buckley. Is there any questions? I need a roll call vote, please. Ms. Fundberg? Yes. Mr. Minkavich? Yes. Ms. Kraut? Yes. Ms. Roscoe? Yes. Ms. Buckley votes yes. President Kluwer? Yes. And there will be no action taken afterwards. All right, Mr. President, I'll make a motion that we convene into regular session. Support. I got a motion by Mr. Minkevich, supported by Ms. Roscoe, to reconvene. Is there any questions out of executive session? Roll call vote, please. Ms. Funderburg? Here. Mr. Minkevich? Yes. Ms. Crow? Ms. Roscoe? Yes. Ms. Buckley? Yes. President Kluwer? Yes. Back in regular session at 7:40. Next motion is adjournment. I make a motion that we adjourn. Okay. Supported by anybody? I'll support. Got a motion by Miss Roscoe, supported by Mr. McKevich. Any questions? All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed. Meeting adjourned. Who is on the motion? To